Audu Bilal Minash Shaitan Rajim, Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Welcome again to our weekly session on Zoom on the MBICC. Uh, today, we're going to continue with what we left off last week with Sheikh Yusuf, um, how to protect your family from hell. This is episode three, and there's a lot to cover, as the Sheikh was telling me. So, we're going to speed up now and continue with the episode, episode three of how to protect your family from hell. Jazakallah, Sheikh. Bismillah. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله محمد بن عبد الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعه بلسان لا يمدين ما دير سبب brothers sisters fathers well as mothers السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته من الله سبحانه وتعالى أكتب وعبادة those who are sick amongst us and amongst the Muslim Ummah wherever they are may Allah سبحانه وتعالى cure them and may Allah SWT save us from this virus and all viruses and all diseases out there. Um, my dear respectable brothers and sisters in the Dean, welcome to another episode of our weekly sessions here in London at the North Brixton Islamic Cultural Center via Zoom. Um, tonight, mashallah, very interesting topic. How to save your family from the hellfire. That's the theme and that's the topic. Bi'idhnillahi subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is episode three, episode three. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us and our families from the hellfire. Um, as I mentioned, the Quran is the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Allah created man, he sent the Rusul, the prophets and anbiya, messengers and prophets to guide us, to teach us, along the, the way, the path, the straight path. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the messengers. And he gave us this ummah, the best of all books, which is the Quran. The Quran is Ummul Kitab, the mother of all books. It contains every aspect of all the other books. And of course, every aspect of our own lives. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ma farrata shay'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not leave out anything without explaining it in the Quran at all. Everything is well explained to myself and you in order for us to follow. So we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that. The ayah we're going to start with is the same verse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran where he said, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu. A call on the believers, O you who believe. Ho anfusakum wa ahlikum nara. Said, O you who believe, God protects your souls and the souls of your family from the hellfire. Wa quduha al-nasu wa al-hijara. The field, the woods of Jahannam, may Allah save all of us from it, would be mankind and stones. Alayha malaikatun ghiladun shidad. In that hellfire, you have angels who are gods there, and they are stern, bold, strong, severe in dealing with the, those who disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They never disobey Allah as to what they are commanded to do. And they do exactly as they are told. So in this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala admonish all of us to guard and protect ourselves first. Because when it comes to the deen, you start with yourself. Kulluna mus'ul an nafsi. Everyone will be responsible for themselves or their soul, uh, individual. Yawm al qiyamah. Every individual will be responsible for themselves. And that's why when we come to Adam, alayhi salam, the day of judgment, and seek for his help. Adam will say to us, no, I'm not that person. I'm not the right person to seek or intercede on your behalf. Nafsi, nafsi, my soul, my soul. And we move on to Noor and the rest up to Isa, alayhi salam, and onto the Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whereas finally he, the Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, will say, Ana laha, 
I arm the person for that and he will call and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to judge us. So everybody will be concerned about themselves yawm al qiyamah everyone. So therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala admonish you. He said, Qu anfusakum, admonish, I mean, save yourselves, your souls, wa ahlikum, and the souls of your family. So after you have make sure you are practicing the deen, then your next responsibility of your fam is your family. Because yawm al qiyamah the day of judgment, your family will come and will say, Ya Allah, inna abi, aw inna ummi, kana yarani ala al-munkar wa lam yanhani, aw kana tarani ala al-munkar wa lam tanhani anha. Say, O oh Allah, my father or my mother, they used to see me disobeying you, but they never stopped me. They never admonished me. Admonish me. They never ever encouraged me to worship you, to be that righteous person on your path. So you wouldn't want to be amongst those categories, Yom al Qiyamah, would you? No. The answer, I believe, you would not want to be amongst them. So it's time for you to admonish yourself now. It is time for you to take heed. It is time for you to guard yourself and guard your family. Now, without going into detail, because we discuss these in the past episodes, I just want you to catch the trend here. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, why? Because the day of judgment, the Jahannam Allah is telling you and myself about, may Allah save us from it. He said the field, the woods would be stones and mankind. Stones and mankind. And the Jahannam would be yelling, graving to get more of the inhabitants. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will stamp or step on it, and the Jahannam will say, it's enough, it's enough. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, li jahannam. the day I will say to the Jahannam, the hellfire, Hal imtala'at? are you fool? وَتَقُولُ هَلْ مِنْ مَزِيد? And the Jahannam will plead, will yearn, yearn or grieve for more, and say, Allah, do you have more? Do you have any additional? Because I need them, I need them. So this is a situation, brothers and sisters, inevitable. Whether I like it or not, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save, save us from it. Now, the next we'll move on is Allah said, save your family. Save your family. Our family, they are our responsibility. And we'll be accountable yawm al qiyamah. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, kullukum ra'in wa kullukum mas'ul an ra'iyati. He said, each and every one of you is a shepherd. And you'll be accountable yawm al qiyamah for your flocks. Your family, your children, your household that you have under your control, you will be questioned yawm al qiyamah if they do not permit, if they do not practice the deen. You will be accountable yawm al qiyamah. For sure, brothers and sisters, you will be questioned yawm al qiyamah if you teach your family the deen. If you have been a good example, a good role model to your family, the problem we have these days is parents, not all. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us be amongst the good ones, Ya Rab. Parents, not all. As I said, they are not good examples. They don't even have role models. They said, Faqidu shay la yu'ti. He who does not own cannot give. How can someone who does not possess good character, give good, pass on good character, or teach someone how to behave properly. It does not work. It doesn't work. It's not just having children. It's not just having family under your control, but it's their responsibility because Allah will ask you, Yom al Qiyamah. And I said, to look at this, right? We have to go to Surah Luqman. Luqman, he was a wise man. He was a man blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with wisdom, knowledge, sincerity, name it. For Allah to mention Luqman in the Quran, this is one of the greatest examples and lessons for myself and you to learn how to bring up our children, how to protect our children from the hellfire. It's enough. If we follow 
these steps. We follow these advices Lokman gave to his son in order to protect him from the hellfire, then be idhnillahi subhanahu wa ta'ala. With sincerity, Allah will answer to your dua. Allah will save your children from the Jahannam. May Allah save them, ya Arham Rahimin. Allah said in Surah Luqman, verse 12, I'm just going briefly through this, some of these ayats because we talked about them. Allah said, وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَ لُقْمَانَ الْحِكْمَةِ Indeed, I have bestowed, we have bestowed on Luqman wisdom. Allah said he blessed Luqman with wisdom. أَنِشْكُرْ لِلَّهِ in order to show gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَنْ يَشْكُرْ فَإِنَّمَا يَشْكُرُ لِنَفْسِي He who shows gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they do it for themselves. وَمَنْ كَفَرْ And he who shows ingratitude, in other words, ungrateful, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ غَنِي Allah is free from all needs. He does not need your praise for him to be the most exalted. No. He is the highest. There is no one above him. There is nothing above Allah. And you disobeying Allah does not reduce or decrease his power. And Hamid, he is self-worthy in praise. Right? He is worthy of all praises. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is worthy of all praises. Subhanallah. وَإِذْ قَالَ The next ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَإِذْ قَالَ لُقْمَانُ الْإِبْنِ And remember when Luqman said to his son, وَهُوَ يَعِذُهُ and he was admonishing, he was advising his son. He was trying to protect his son from the hellfire. He was trying to protect his son from the hellfire. So he was admonishing his son. He said, Ya Bunay, O you my dearest son, La tushrik billah. Do not join Allah, a sweet Allah with the partner. Why? Because inna shirka la dhulmun azim. Joining Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a partner, it is the greatest of all sins. There is no sin, atrocity, one could ever commit on the surface of this earth or the land greater than shirk. That's why Luqman, the first thing he did is to teach his son to present this case study to his son about shirk. He said, don't join Allah with a partner. Worship Allah alone. Because say Allah is one. He is alone. A summit. Allah Allah is alone. He does not depend upon anyone. He has no son, nor has he begotten by anyone. And he does not consult anybody. This is Allah. And for those who claim that Allah has a son, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Takadu samawat yatafattarna He said the sky, when they say it, the sky is almost about to demolish because of the atrocity they commit when they say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a son. Subhana, glory be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, Luqman said to his son, my son, do not commit shirk. It's the greatest of all atrocity. And then he moved on, saying, Allah said, I have enjoined upon man to be honored, I mean, respectful to his parents. His mother or her mother carried their pregnancy. Difficulties upon difficulties she went through. And the breastfeeding, the breastfeeding period happens to be two years consecutively. Allah said, Anishkurli. Then be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, be grateful to me. In other words, be grateful to Allah. Wali wali daik. And then be grateful to your parents. Ilayya al masir To Allah, you shall all return. And I told you the last time that Ibn Abbas said, three things, Allah will not accept them without the co-partners. The first, aqimu salah wa atu zakah. 
Allah said, establish prayer, the regular prayer, and give zakah. Anyone who establishes the five daily prayer and they have the nisab, the amounts to give zakah, and they did not do it intentionally, Allah will not accept the salah. Because they go together. And the second, wa'ati'ur rasul, wa'ati'ur laha, wa'ati'ur rasul. Obey Allah and obey the messenger. He who obeys Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they only obey the Quran. And they intentionally abandon, ignore the sunnah, the tradition of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah will not accept either of them from that person. And the third, a shahid, which we want to talk about here, is Allah, the next, the third, Allah said, Anishkur li. You see this verse? He said, be grateful to me, wali walidayk, and your parents. Wa man shakra lillah. Whoever shows gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they perform their salah. And they are not grateful to their parents. They are not respectful to their parents. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not accept it from them. So therefore, be careful. Be careful. After shirk, after shirk, the worst of all sins, the worst of all actions is disrespect, to be disrespectful to your parents. Allah said, فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفْ Do not word, utter any word of contempt to them. Don't say, mom, you're too much, dad, you're too much, shout at them. Do not raise your voice over them. I don't want to go into detail because we talked about it last week. So therefore, Luqman brought this into his son's attention. Because if someone worship Allah, they pray, but they don't please their parents, right? They did not do what their parents asked them to do, except that which, I mean, um, goes against what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said, or what Allah has commanded you. And that's why verse fifteen, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said, "Wa in jahadak, and if they strive very hard, ala an tushrika bi, they will force you to disobey me, Allah. If your parents they force, they do all kind of jihad, go all angles, to." convince you or force you to disobey me, to court, commit shirk. Allah said, Ma laysa laka bihi ilm, especially to that which you do not have knowledge. Fala Allah said, do not obey them in that regard. But at the same time, look, he said, at the same time, fi dunya ma'rufa. Be kind to them in this dunya. Don't shout at them. Don't curse them. Don't swear at them. Because they told you to disobey Allah. No, talk to them politely, pass your message across them nicely and say to them, sorry daddy, sorry mom, I'm not going to do it because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not like it. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not be pleased with me. You say it nicely, right? You address them nicely. Allah said, Thum man anaba and follow the path of those who turn to me in the repentance. You shall all return to me thereafter. And I will then inform you what you used to do in the dunya. Now, the next verse, Luqman said to his son, Ya Bunay, verse 16. He said, He said, Whatever little sin you commit or shirk, whatever little it is, even if it is a seed, like the seed, equivalent to the seed of an atom. Fatun fi sakhra, hidden ork fi sama aw fi samawat, or up the skies above. Aw fi al-aw the earth below. Ya'ati biha Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring it yawm al-qiyamah. He will bring it yawm al-qiyamah. Subhanallah. Don't forget the ayah, the surah, that's me and you. We read this surah, we know it. If I start this surah, you will end it for me. Allah said, فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا يَرَى You see, I was saying it, I said you finish it. You complete it, mashallah. فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ شَرَّيْ يَرَى Whoever does good deeds, they do good deeds. Even if it's tinier than the seed of atom, Allah said you will see it in Al-Qiyam. And if it's greater than that seed, that grain, seed of grain, right? Greater than that, you will see it in Al-Qiyam. It will be brought before you. So Luqman said to his son, it does not matter, right? The gratitude of that sin. 
it will be brought it will be brought to yom al-qiyamah and in allah latif allah is up to you and at the same time khabir allah is well aware of what you do well now we're going to start from this is what we we, we summarize what we dealt with in the past episodes but now we're going to verse 17 and as i always say i want you to hear it from someone else our host so you can hear it in English language, and I will dwell in it. Luqman advised his son. The first, note it down. The first is shirk, because it is the greatest of all sins. He established the Tawheed. And second, the importance of parents. The importance of parents. And he also tried to bring to his son's attention that the gratitude of that sin, whatever sin they commit, it does not matter. So don't look at the how big or huge the sin is, but the gravity, the danger that sin is going to cause on you. That's what you need to look at, right? Because some people they say, oh, I, "I thank God, Alhamdulillah." It's better for me at least I just smoke cigarettes. I don't drink alcohol. No, it does not matter. It doesn't matter whether the sin is a minor sin or big, greater sin or bigger sin. All of them destroys Yom Al-Qiyamah. May Allah save us from them, Ya Rab. Now verse 17, what did Luqman say? Yes, my dearest host, that's the Yom Oh my son, mm -hmm. Akimi Salat. Yeah, hold on, salat. hold on, sorry, hold on. The first, he said, oh, my son, aqim is salah. That's the first. And then the next? And join, perform salat, and mm -hmm. join on people. Mm -hmm. Al-Mahruf. Yeah. Islamic monotheism. Mm -hmm. And all that is good. Okay. And forbid people from al munkar mm -hmm. I disbelief yeah. in the oneness of Allah, polytheism of all kinds, yeah. and all that is evil and bad. Mm -hmm. And bear with patience whatever befalls you. Mm -hmm. Verily, these are some of the important commandments yeah. ordered by Allah with no exemption. Mm -hmm. SubhanAllah. Amazing. This ayah entails so many things we can instill or we should work very hard to instill into the minds of our children and family. He said, Ya Bunay, as you've heard from our dearest host, he said, Ya Bunay, oh my dear son. You see the way he addressed his son? He did not say to his son, Ya Bunay, my son. The Bunay, the concept of how um, Luqman called his son, you sense the belonging, the respect, the honor Luqman had for his son. He respected his son, despite being the son, yet he does respect him. He gave him what he deserved as a human being. Ya Allah. He said, Ya Bunay, oh you my dear son, aqimi salah, establish a regular prayer. You remember last week, I told you, I said, Luqman, pardon me, Luqman, he advised his son to establish salah because the salah is important. After the tawheed, the shahada, right? The iman, believing in the Rasulullah of course, after the shahada, the tawheed is the salah. Salah. That's why the prophets and Anbiya, prophets and messengers before, they used to advise their family to establish Salah. Establish Salah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala advised the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to admonish his own family to be patient in Salah and establish it. Allah said in Surah Taha, verse 132, He said, Wa ahalak, command your family. This 
an advice from Allah or command from Allah to the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he must advise or command his people. Wa'mur, he said, command and command them. Ahalak, your family, be salah, to establish a regular prayer. Wastabir alayha, and let them seek patience in it. Allah said, la nas'aluka rizqa. I do not, we do not ask you for provision. Nahnu narzukuk. Allah said, we provide for you. The good ending is for those who attain consciousness. And the last speech of the Rasul before he passed away is he was saying, As salah, as salah, prayer, prayer, prayer. And that which your right hand possesses. And Ismail, السلام, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised him in the Quran because he used to advise his children and family to perform salah. Allah said, وَذْكُرْ فِي الْكِتَابِ Ismail." Remember in the book, Ismail, إِنَّهُ كَانَ صَادِقَ الْوَعْدِ He used to fulfill promises. When he promised, he fulfilled it. That's one of his qualities, subhanAllah. وَكَانَ رَسُولًا نَبِيًّا He was a prophet and a messenger at the same time. وَكَانَ يَأْمُرُ أَهْلَهُ This is Surah Maryam, verse 5, 54 to 55. He said, وَكَانَ يَأْمُرُ أَهْلَهُ He used to command his people, his family, his own family, بِالصَّلَاةِ to establish prayer, to perform salah, was zakah, and give zakah, وَكَانَ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِ مَرْدِيَةِ Because of this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was pleased with him. Ya Allah. Ya Allah. Allah said, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ He said, the believers are successful. Surah Al-Mu'minun. He said, the believers are successful. الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صُلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ Those who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in their salah, when they stand in salah, they fear Allah. And even the other ayah, when Allah and talked about the qualities of those who are going to inherit al-Jannah, Firdaus, he said the next ayah, before he came to those who, you know, who are going to inherit al-Jannah, he said, وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ عَلَىٰ صَلَوَاتِهِمْ يُحَافِذُونَ He said, and those who guard their salah, they perform their salah on time, regularly. He said, أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْوَارِثُونَ those will be the inheritors of Al-Jannah. They will be the inheritors of Al-Jannah Firdaus and they will dwell in forever in Al-Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us be the dwellers of Al-Jannah. Right? So, the Salah and is very important. The Rasul Sallallahu said, Murru awladakum bis Salah. He said, command your children to perform salah. When they are seven years old, and discipline them if they did not perform salah. They are, when they are 10 years old, they must perform salah. And when they reach that, that, reach that age, separate them in bed. Separate them in bed. أول ما يحاس به العبد يوم القيامة صلاة يحب يحاس به العبد يوم القيامة صلاة. The first Allah سبحانه وتعالى will question the seventh يوم القيامة is his صلاة, his prayer. If Allah سبحانه وتعالى accepts your صلاة, سر سر حد سائر العمل. Allah سبحانه وتعالى will accept all the other deeds. He will accept the the zakah, the siyam, fasting, and etc. But if Allah does not accept one صلاة, all the other deeds are in vain. Allah will not accept it. Do not joke with salah, brothers and sisters. Stand in salah with fear. You fear Allah and also with hope that Allah is a forgiving God. He will forgive you. He will forgive you. Now, we're not going to dwell too much into this, into this because I talked about it in detail last week. Now, the next is Allah said, Ya Bunay, Aqimi salah, my son, perform salah. Wa mur bil ma'aruf, wa naha anil munkar. Allah. He said, my son, enjoy the good and forbid the evil. Enjoy the good and forbid the evil. Why? 
Why did he say to his son, enjoy the good and forbid the evil? Because this is very, very important. It is the guarantee, right? Uh, sorry, yeah. It is the guarantee actually that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not punish, will not hold anyone ransom for as long as they enjoy the good and forbid the evil. And that classify myself and you to be the best of this ummah. What did Allah say? He says in the Quran, Kuntum khayra ummah. Said you've been the best of the ummah. Best of all nations Allah has ever created on the surface of this earth. Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat linnas. Ever since Allah created mankind. From Adam to now, our generation is the best of all ummah. Our ummah. Why? كنتم خير أمة أخرجت للناس تأمرون بالمعروف because you enjoy the good وتناهون عن المنكر أن يفبد إيفون وتؤمنون بالله through that you achieve إيمان. The believers, Allah described the believers in the Quran as people who have the quality of Enjoying the good and forbidding the evil. He said, "Alladina imma kana hum fil ard." This is Surah Al-Hajj, verse forty-one. He said, "And for those whom I have established in the land, on earth, what do they do?" Allah said, "Aqamu al-salah." They establish regular prayer. Wa atu zakat. They give zakat. Zakat. Wa amaru bil maaruf. They enjoin the good. وَنَهَوْا عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ And they forbid the evil. وَلِلَّهِ عَاقِبَةُ الْأُمُورُ So Allah belong all the rest of all the affairs. Yes. That's very, very important for you to advise your brothers and sisters to do good. When you see evil, don't keep quiet if you can change it. If you can say something. Because that's the, 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 the qualities of the munafiqeen. They do the opposites. Allah said in Surah Tawbah, Surah Tawbah, verse 67. He said, Al-Munafiquna wal-Munafiqat. Ah. He said, the hypocrites, men as well as women. Ba'duhum min ba'd. He said, they help us with one another. Ya'muruna bil-munkar. They command people to commit evil. They tell their brothers, go and fight him. Go and beat him up. Not the opposites. Because they are munafiqeen. وَيَنَهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمَعْرُوفِ And they enjoin, right, sorry, they, they forbid the good. They enjoin the evil and forbid the, the, the good. Subhanallah. وَيَقْبِدُونَ أَيْدِيَهُمْ They hold on to one another. They don't spend for the sake of Allah. They don't support one another for the sake of Allah. They don't urge one another to go towards the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or support the deen. Nasullah. They ignore Allah, they forgot about Allah. فَنَسِيَهُمْ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ignored them, abandoned them. Because إِنَّ الْمُنَافِقِينَ Indeed, verily, the hypocrites, هُمُ الْفَاسِقُونَ They are the transgressors. And another ayah, Allah said, they will be at the bottom pit of Jahannam. May Allah save us from that. So the believers, they enjoy the good. And forbid the evil. You know the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said. That. مثل القائم على حدود الله والواقع فيها. He said the similitude of the one who enjoyed the good. You see the danger. And look at the good side of it. Yeah? He said the similitude of the one who enjoys the good. The one who tells people to do good things. والواقع فيها. And the one who does not encourage people to do good. They support them to do evil. He said the ex the similitude between these two. He said, "Kamathali qawmin istahamu ala safina." It's like people who board a ship, you know, the boats or a ferry. Put it this way, and they board this boat or this ferry or this ship. And this ship or this boat, فأصاب بعدهم علىها وبعدهم أسفلها. It has two levels. It has the lower and the basement. Put it that way. 
It says some people occupied the upper deck, the, you know, the upper floor, and others are in the lower. And فَكَانَ الَّذِينَ فِي أَسْفَلِهَا إِذَا اسْتَقُوا الْمَاءِ أَوْ إِذَا اسْتَقُوا مِنَ الْمَاءِ مَرُوا عَلَى مَنْ فَوْقَهُمْ And those at the bottom, they said, you know what? We are at the bottom of this ship or these boats. What we need to do, we don't want to disturb our brothers upstairs, you know, upstairs or the upper deck to go and fetch water. It's too much. Let's just hit the boats and then the water will just come out. I mean, we come in from the bottom. Once the water gush, you know, out, I mean, from the, from the sea into the boats, once the water gets in, then we'll get water easily without disturbing them up, up there. And the Rasul said, he said, Lo, But those up, those who are occupying the upper deck or the upper floor, if they leave those at the bottom to do what they wanted to do, to hit the boats and get water underneath, simple like that as that, Lahalaku wahalaku jamia. The Rasul said, they will drown. Those at the bottom and those at the top, all of them will drown. They will get destroyed, demolished. But if they stop them not to do that evil act they wanted to do, what they intended to do, the Rasul said, all of them will get will save. All of them. So this is my responsibility and your responsibility. So make sure we warn others not to do haram, not to commit bid'ah, not to do haram. Be, I have said this to you, brothers. Because the Rasul Sallallahu said, Man ra'a minkum munkara, whoever sees evil, you must change it for li'ayiruhu bi'yadi, change it with your hand. Well, now, according to the ulama, they said this lies with the authority more. They can take this path. Not you. They can take this part, part. And then the next, if you cannot change it with your hand, at least say a word, nice word, not a bad, not someone you, you swear at them. No, 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 no. You, when you advise someone, you advise, advise them with respect, with manners, not with arrogance, not with disrespect. Right? Allah, the Rasul said, فَإِن لَمْ يَسْتَتِعْ If you cannot change it with your tongue, فَبِقَلْبِ Then change it with your heart. Show the person. They must see it from your appearance that what they are doing is not good. You don't encourage them. وَذَلِكَ أَدْعَفُ الْإِيمَانِ And that is the least of all iman. That's the least. So, it is even reported that one day, Jibril, right, took the responsibility with the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to go and destroy some people in a town or city. When he went there, he saw this man, or some narration said, he saw these people, group of people. But actually, he saw this man, mashallah, he secluded himself, worshipping Allah all the time. He devoted himself in ibadah, worship. And then he said, Ya Allah, he said, Inna fihim rajulun saleh. He said, these people you ask me to turn the city over them, to destroy them. There is good man, pious man amongst them who prays a lot. And Allah SWT said to Jibreel, he said, Fabda Abi. He said, start with him. Destroy him first. Why? فَإِنَّهُ يَرَاهُمْ عَلَى الْمُنْكَرْ وَلَمْ يَنْهَاهُمْ عَنْ because he sees them disobeying Allah, but he never said a word. He was just concerned about himself. Right? He was concerned about himself, not the people, not the community. So it is my responsibility and your responsibility to advise others not to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to enjoy the good, not to fight. Right? And the Rasul Sallallahu said before we move on, in the Hadith, according to Muslim, actually Tirmidhi, this is on the authority of Tirmidhi, the Rasul Sallallahu said, he said, لَتَأْمُرُنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ 
you must enjoy the good. ولا تنهون عن المنكر or forbid the evil. أو لا يشكن الله أي عمكم بعقاب من عندي. Otherwise, as a result, if you intentionally ignore this, very soon Allah subhanahu wa taala will bring His punishments. This coronavirus. Imagine, brothers and sisters, if you ignore and join in the good and forbid the evil, very soon, rather than later, Allah subhanahu wa taala will bring His punishments. ثم تدعونه فلا يستجاب لكم. And you will end up calling, making du'a, and your du'a will not be accepted. Ya Allah. So Luqman said to his son, My son, establish the salah. Wa'amur bil ma'aruf, enjoin the good, wanaha'anil munkar, and forbid the evil. Allah. And then he said, Wasbir ala ma asabak. Ya Allah. This is one of the best advices Luqman gave to his son. He said, and be patient with whatsoever afflictions, trial you go through. Whatsoever trial. Allah said, <laughs> some people here, Surah Al-Hajj, verse 11. He said, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ Amongst mankind, amongst the people. مَنْ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ عَلَىٰ حَرْفِ They worship Allah on the edge. فَإِنْ أَصَوْبَتُ أَصَوْبَهُ الْخَيْرِ when they acquired good fortunes, mashallah, that will guarantee them to stay in their deen. But when they are faced with affliction, they turn to the fetish, they turn to the juju man, black magician, whatever. They go to other side, the other side and say, that pastor will pray for me. No. And as a result, because of they are in the age on the edge, in qalaba ala wajhi, they turn away from their deen. Khasira dunya wal akhira, they lose this dunya and the hereafter. Thalika huwa al khusran al mubin. That's the greatest loss ever. That's the greatest loss. Allah will test you, brothers and sisters. Allah said, "Wala nablu an nakum bi shayi min al khawf." I will surely try to test you with something of fear, wonder, hunger. Some of us, our test is fear. You are just afraid of something, scared. And some is hunger. They don't have food. Some is poverty. The wealth they had, the business, all has gone. Well, I'm for some, their brothers and sisters, family, children, parents, they've passed away suddenly like that. Well, Samarats. And also some of the provisions that you know they had or they have is gone. The fruits. But Allah said, upon all these trials you are going through, upon all the coronavirus and etc. trials you are going through, financial difficulties, he said, well, sure, give good news as so to so those who are patients. He did not say good, good, give good news to the believers, no, because there are some who believe, but they are not patients. Allah said, well, sure. Give good news as sabirin to those who are patient. Who are those people? Those are the people when they are faced with afflictions, trial. Qalu, their response, they say, Inna lillah, we are owned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa inna ilayhi raji'un. And so Allah, we shall all return. Allah said, Ulaika alayhim salawatu mi rabbihim wa rahma. Those are the people who will be bestowed upon, right? By Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with mercy and blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those are the right and guided ones. Those are the ones who are guided on the path. So be patient. Of course, it's not easy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, أَحَسِبَ النَّاسِ أَنْ يُتْرَقُوا أَنْ يَقُولُوا آمَنَّا وَهُمْ لَا يُفْتَنُونَ Do you think you will say, I believe, I have faith, I'm a believer, I'm a Muslim, and you are not being tested? Allah has tested those before you. Yesterday, alhamdulillah, one sister accepted Islam. I gave the sister shahada yesterday. 
But I told the sister, I said, let me just bring this into your attention. That you declaring your shahada today, may Allah make her become steadfast in, steadfast in the deen and all of us, Ya Rabbi. I said, you declaring the shahada today does not mean that you are saved, you are protected from tests. No. Probably today will be the day you're going to start facing the proper tests of your life. So be ready to face that. And the Rasul Sallallahu said, he said, Ajaban li amrin mu'min, ya Allah. He said, amazing the affairs, the life of a believer. Why? Why is it that only the believer's life or aspect of his own affairs is amazing? Why? He said, inna amrahu kullahu khair. Every aspect of the life of a believer is good. وَلَيْسَ ذَلِكَ إِلَّا لِلْمُؤْمِنِ And that is for no one. It will not happen for anyone except for a believer. Everything about the believer or for him or her is good. He will not complain Allah to the creation. No. Why? Because in Asabat Sarra, Shekhar, when they receive good news, 14 good things, they show gratitude to Allah. They thank Allah. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ he said, Allah in shakaratum la zidanakum. If you show gratitude to Allah, Allah will increase you more. He said, Fakana khair Allah. That's good for them. Wa ina asobat wu darra. And when they are faced with afflictions, trial, test, sabr, their patience. Fakana khair Allah is still good for them. So it's good for you. Whatever Allah decides is good. Some people. If they have money, for example, they will not even follow the Zoom. <laughs> they will not even pray. They will be busier doing other stuff. And probably Allah wants to use this to elevate you, to grant you al-Jannah. Because the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said on the authority of Bukhari and Muslim, according to Abi Sa'id and Abi Huray radiallahu an, he said, may Allah SWT be pleased with both of them. He said that the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, he said, ما يصيب المسلم من نصب ولا وصب ولا هزن ولا هم ولا هزن ولا أذى ولا غم. He said, never a believer is stricken with discomforts, whether it's an illness or anxiety or a grief or mental worry or even حتى شوكا يشاكها even the pricking of a thorn. إِلَّهَ كَفَّرُ اللَّهُ بِهَا مِنْ خَطَايَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will use that to expiate their sins on the accounts of the patience they have. So Luqman said to his son, he said, be patient, because no one knows the reward of those who are patient. Wallahi, no, it is not stipulated in the Quran how much or how huge, specifically, the reward of, um, actually, the measure of the reward of those who are patient. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not measure it. I mean, did not talk any about the measurements and this. I'm like, no, no. He said in the Quran, he said, Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will reward the, those who are patient, those who are patient without limits, without limits. So the reward of the patient one has no limits. And Allah love those who are patient. Wallahu yuhibbu sabirin. See Allah. Allah said, wasbir, be patient. You know why? Because Allah is with you, he said, Inna Allah sabirin Allah is with those who are patient. The Maya mentioned earlier, Innama yuwafa sabirun. Not Innama yuwafa, Innama yuwafa sabirun. Allah said, those who are patient, they will be rewarded. Ajurahum, according to their reward and their deed, actually, according to their deeds, the ghayri he said, without any measure. Without any limits, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us be amongst the patient ones. As we come into the end of the session, Luqman said to his son, He said, Wasbir ala ma asabak. 
Be patient with whatsoever affliction you go through. Inna dhalika min azmil umur. These are one of the greatest of all our fears. Brothers and sisters, this is the path. This is my path, the path we are going to um, head, actually head towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we want to save ourselves and our family, our children, this is the only solution. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it. Keep smiling. Trust me, we have episodes on this. Encourage your brothers and sisters, your children, your family to get involved. God, you will be responsible the al Qiyamah. May Allah reward the host and brothers, sisters who initiated this wonderful work, wonderful job, subhanAllah. They are earning even while they are asleep. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all of us. Well, keep smiling back to my host for questions and answers. People have been blessing you, making dua for you on the chat. So um, I don't have to read it again, but everyone will see, you can see it later, inshallah. So now um, we're going to question and answer. We have some time. We can ask Sheikh on everything that he has mentioned or anything that you feel that you need to um, ask Sheikh about. So you can put your own hop on your emoji, um, then we can select you for a question, please. I don't know if Brother Wally is there to help me to see the screen. Is it there? No. Okay, well, um, when they ask, they were going to ask a question, I just remember very important announcements. No, I was sorry. going to tell my dearest host, but sorry for taking you on our way. Um, the, one of our sisters who comes to the class called, um, Sister Hafsa, probably all the sisters who come to this masjid know her. The sister passed away yesterday. Inna lillah. Inna ilahi rajiul. Hafsa. Yeah. You know her. Your wife know her, knows her. She is one of the humble sister. She sister passed away yesterday. It is is touching. Yeah. It's so sad. May Allah forgive her. Amen. This sister today, with the brothers and sisters, we decide um, we dig in a well, or contributing towards the well for sister, the sister on her behalf. So we started asking brothers and sisters whoever have five pounds, 10 pounds, you know it's coronavirus time, but if we can be able to gather from now to Friday to Thursday, inshallah, anything, mm -hmm. one pound, 10 pounds, don't forget if you donate on behalf of the sister, you earn the same reward we're going to Continue, um, donate towards a well they are digging for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when I said I will share this and I forgot to tell the host at the beginning. It's so sad, Sister Hafsa. She, is, she reads her Quran when she comes to the class. She doesn't even lift her gaze like this. She does like this and will be asking a question, Sheikh, this and that, subhanAllah. The sister passed away yesterday. May Allah forgive her. Back to you, my dear host. Okay, um, there is a question in the chat, Sheikh. Someone no. asking, no. Uh, talking about this donation you want to do before we pass, yeah, how no. do you want it to be done? Um, people can call your the masjid number or they can call my number, and then inshallah, we can discuss how they um do their donation. Inshallah, they can send it to oh, us no. straight away, or inshallah, they pass it to you and they will tell them their accounts, inshallah. Um, okay. They want to pay too, inshallah, that, that's, that's no problem. And then um, we, we have, as I mentioned last week, we have sisters, mashallah, um, who are actually donating for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the time. And we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts it from all of them and all of us here. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Well, um, the first question that comes on the chat, someone is asking, what is the, uh, what is the name? Oh, oh, sorry. Someone just, <laughs> uh, um, what is the origin of voodoo? Mm -hmm. uh, someone asked that question, what is uh, the name? What's the question again? Uh, someone asked a question asking what, what is the origin? No, 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 someone just put the masjid accounts. Don't put the masjid yeah. accounts uh, there, please. No. We don't pay to the masjid accounts. This is just for the sister. 
Uh, the you sister that passed away, sister Hafsa. Yeah, 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 yeah. You don't yeah, donate don't on that. her behalf to the masjid accounts, no. You oh, only, yeah, don't, yeah please don't put it in the masjid accounts. Just pass it, call our number. Brother yeah. Walio, our host, Uncle Abdurrahman, any one of us, yeah. pass it, inshallah. You can, for me, you can pay it to my account anyway. I would take the movie like one sister always do. Inshallah. But please don't pay it to the masjid accounts. This is also our initiative, inshallah, once we have the sister. So, uh, salam alaikum. Um, what is the origin of wudu? Well, if I may understand the, 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 the question, the origin of wudu, obviously, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala command us to perform wudu before we pray. Because Allah will not accept your salah without wudu. And that's why I said in the Quran, in Surah Tawbah, Ma'idah, sorry, he said, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amen, O you who believe, Ida qumtum ila salah, Allah said, whenever you intend to pray, that's where, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught us how to make wudu. He said, Faqsil wudu hakum wa aidiyakum ila al-marafiq. He said, when you intend to pray, wash your hands, of course, your faces, and then he said, your um, arms, and up to your elbows, and then wipe your heads, up to, of course, the forehead to the, head, the end of the head, and then he said, wash your feet, and then explain everything, and you pray. So that's the origin of wudu. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us to um, make wudu before we pray. And the Rasulullah said, Allah will not accept salah of the salah of anyone without performing wudu. Allah knows best. Now, no. Sheikh. Now, uh, there's a hand up, Hakia. No. You can unmute yourself and ask your question, Hakia. Yes, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalamu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, sister. Program, Alhamdulillah, I'm finding it very interesting. May Allah accept it. Yes, I'm Uncle Abdurrahman's niece. I'm actually a married. That's my niece. That's good. From the US. From the US, mashallah, you're welcome. Naam. Uh, my question is regarding the Sadaqa Jaria. Um, yeah. Is it allowed to combine it for more than one person? You know, like when you said about the sister, if someone else, if I want to do it for people, can I combine Amazing. it? Amazing. May Allah reward you. Of course you can. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you. Of course you can. You can combine it and you earn the same reward. And amazingly, let me tell you something. When you give sadaqah on someone else's behalf, as I mentioned, the person you give the sadaqah on his or her behalf, whether your parents, you're going to earn the same reward as they earn, even though you're doing it for them. You're going to earn. In other words, it's going to be written that you have dug a well for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? It's the same like when you make dua. If you pray for me, inshallah, please don't forget to pray for me. He said, I pray for Sheikh Yusuf. You have angels by your side. They said unto you the same. May Allah accept it. Jazakallah khair. Jazakallah. Wa yak. Wa yak. Wa yak. So, um, is there any other question that you want to ask Sheikh? You can put it on the text. We have uh, about five minutes now. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, any, any question for Sheikh? Uh, Bola Muzaki, can you see anyone with their hand up? If I, if I can see them. Is there anyone? Yeah, yeah, there's a hand up. I saw a finger up. <laughs> okay. Yes. Kane Ismail. Kane. Kane Ismail. Yes. Unmute yourself and ask your question, brother. Just press your button, take the word out, and ask the question. Mashallah. Yeah. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, my name is Ishmael Kane from Swahili. MashaAllah, Ismail Kane. May Allah reward you, uh, brother. How are you? You all right? I mean, I'm okay. And uh, my question goes like this If my parents are not Muslim, they, are, they automatically she have passed away. Do I have that right to make a dwell for her? Um, thank you very much, brother. Um, very, very important question. Um, unfortunately, and sadly, you are not allowed to pray for her when they are not alive, when they are when they've passed away. If they are alive, you can pray for them. You continue to make dua for them. Continue to support them and respect them. But in this regard, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has commanded the Rasul and all the believers not to pray for them at all. May Allah make it easier for us and may Allah guide our parents before they pass away. Pass away. Amen. Amen. My next question is from uh, Mohammed. And uh, you can unmute yourself, Mohammed. Yeah, my question is um, you know, now the money prayer is um, 
Jama is 6.45. Okay. Then um, I start work at 7 o'clock. From my house mm -hmm. to work is like one hour. What did I need to do, please? Did I need to pray before I go? No, you, you said the Jama prayer is 6.45. And what? And the yeah. job what? The distance to my, my work is like one hour. From your workplace? I will leave my house around 5 something, okay. 5.30, 5.40. Okay. When do you have to be at work? Seven o'clock. Seven o'clock. All yeah. right. Well, in that regard, you have to pray. It's go to the, you know, if, if there is a machine close to your workplace, are we late? At him. No, no, I'm just, I'm late? just, I'm just, yeah, just, just a minute. Let me give you the options mm. because it will be a benefit. It will be a benefit for those who are listening as well. If the masjid is, you have a masjid, you Google, you have a masjid closer to your workplace where mm. they can pray jama. Then you go to work for the haraj, no problem. You pray with them. But otherwise, inshallah, I believe you have a place to pray in um, your workplace before you start work. It would be nice if you have some other two brothers or whoever, inshallah, you can pray jama there. Otherwise, you pray it, inshallah, at workplace, inshallah, and then you have a few time before you start your job. Allah knows best. May Allah make it easier for you. Allah. What I'm saying... If I live, like I arrive there after seven, then I need to still make, do the prayer. Of course, the prayer you have to do it. Yeah, you definitely have to do your prayer. Exactly. Every prayer at any time. With the Rasulullah said, if you are asleep or you forgot to pray, and then you realize later on, they realize, oh no, I haven't prayed yet. Immediately, when you remember, you must pray. You yeah. must. So the salah has to be performed immediately on time. I don't Except I don't need to do it exist. before the prayer, right? No, no, no. You cannot pray before time. Okay. In time. Okay. Yeah. You have to I pray, pray on time. Yeah. Okay. On time. And you have to pray after if there is any valid excuse. Okay. Allah knows best. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. The, uh, any last question? There's a question on the chat saying, like, is, is it risky to our Islamic faith to take a child to an imam to pray on him for stability? Uncle, sorry, there's um, a question before as well, just, just in case you forget. It's called, what is the best dua? Maybe you can answer both. Yeah, I saw that one, yeah. yeah. Okay. I don't know what, now, what, what does that mean? What is the best okay, dua? Okay, the, the best dua we give you today is Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatan wa fil akhirati hasanatan wa qina adab anar. You ask Allah, this, this is comprehensive. He says everything. He said, oh Allah, grant us the best, all the best in this dunya, everything that is good in this dunya. And everything that is good in the hereafter. So that comprises everything, isn't it? So one of the best du'a we give you. There are so many du'as. Inshallah, but take this one and say it all the time. And if you want to say, Ya Muqallib al qulub thabbit qulubana ala deenik. Or you're the one who changes the hearts, make our hearts become steadfast in your deen. Yeah? Allah SWT knows best. And move on to the next question. Um, my uncle um, read on the chat where someone is saying, is it risky to take your child to an imam yes. to pray for them um, for stability. You see, first of all, the best prayer for your child is your prayer as a father or mother. Your prayer is more important than the prayer of the imam or the congregation or community for your child. Yes, it is. Because, subhanAllah, the dua of the mother, the Rasul mentioned amongst the duas that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not reject whether it's good or bad. So that's why we have to be very careful. Whether it's good or bad, is one of them is the dua of the parents for his, to his child. Once you raise your hands up, asking Allah to make your children become steadfast in the deen, you ask Allah to give them stability in life and guidance, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah, will accept. Don't you hear? Surah Ibrahim, the dua, that you've shared here, I think on Zoom, through Zoom, or even the Masjid with Sheikh Faisal, probably myself, sometimes, we say, Rabbi ja'alni muqeem as salah When you are in sujood, you say, oh Allah, make us be amongst those who establish regular prayer. Rabbi ja'alni muqeem as salah Wa min dhuriyati, and my offspring as well. Rabbana wa taqabbal dua. Oh Allah, accept our dua. Rabbi ghfirli, oh Allah, forgive me. Wali walidei, and my parents. Well, in Mu'mineen and the believers, Yawma Yaqum Al-Hisab, the day of accountability. So these are very, very important. But so one should not ask for the risk. There is nothing, an imam, I don't think any imam will, 
you know, be a risk to anyone. He's an imam. He's there to guide you. He's there to show you the path through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's permission, through Allah's will. Inshallah, for the haraj, Allah knows best. Yes, uh, Shaka, some uh, flipping questions coming up. Um, say, what is the uh, name given to the Nafila before Dohr? And Nafila not... have names? Uh, you call it, you already call it in Nafila. It's Nafila. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's Sumna, yeah. It's Nawafil. They call yes. it Nafila or Nawafil. Nafila is the singular, and then Nawafil is plural. So, no. yeah. uh, Salaam alaikum. I have a question of for you traveling in the morning, and can you do Fajr Ali? But you, I just mentioned that one. Yeah, yeah. Can yeah. Do Fajr Ali so you can't do it earlier than the time. No. So, uh, can we take the last question of the day? <clears throat> Someone hand is up. Uh, Amina? iPhone, can you unmute yourself? That's the last, yeah, the last question, inshallah. Yes. Assalamu alaikum, sir. How are you? I'm fine, alhamdulillah, sister. How are you? I'm fine, thank you, alhamdulillah. Sorry, that's my children. No, don't worry, don't friends. worry. I miss them. They miss me, that's why. <laughs> yeah, they do. Mm -hmm. um, my question is, um, I have a, a discussion or debate with a very good friend of mine um, all the time about Salah. Um, mm -hmm. I just want to know the exact warning. Um, in making, say you want to pray um, Maghrib and Isha together, can you pray Isha before it comes in, or do you have to wait for it to come in before you can join the two salats together? Mm -hmm. Well, um, when it comes to jam salat, like you join the salat together, yeah? Um, yes. on the, when it's necessary, for example, Maghrib and Isha, of course, that's because it's, you are combining them. So you can pray Maghrib, then you pray Isha, because that one comes under necessity. Sometimes, even when the Rasul was alive, when the rain, for example, storm, heavy wind, he used to say to them, you pray in your houses for now, we can't pray in the mosque. Or maybe they combine when they finish Salatul Maghrib and they can pray Isha before, as long as they finish praying Maghrib, Inshallah. They just wait for a short time, Inshallah, it enters. Allah SWT knows best. Okay, does that look Well, yeah. Well, um, we, we will be coming to the end of the session, as I mentioned to you before about the sister who passed away. Please don't forget, contact myself, contact um, Uncle Abdurrahman, contact the host, Contact Sheikh Faisal Buhadi, contact you know, anyone that can reach us. My number is there. And I mentioned to you two weeks back, I think one of the sisters, I will not mention her name. Subhanak Ya Rab. I remember during Ramadan, as all of you used to do, she would just send two, three hundred pounds, three, four, whatever. She would just say, Sheikh, I've paid money. Please give charity to this. And Alhamdulillah, up to now, the last time even children, poor people are enjoying or they are benefiting from that. But please, for the sake of Allah, this is your sister. It could be you. It could be you, you never know. And if we keep doing this for our brothers and sisters, it will help those who do those 40 days, 30 days, 100 days, or one year, or refrain from that. This is the best thing we can do for them, yeah? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant all of us al Jannah. Thank you very much, my dearest host. You've worked very hard. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you. What a good job you are doing. What a good job, to be honest. I'm so pleased, what a good job. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it from all of us and make us be sincere in whatsoever we do and accept it from all of us don't forget to pray for me inshallah keep smiling because i love you all you know i really do love you all and um make sure this year i don't leave you for ramadan i go to Sri Lanka. Uh, mm -hmm. very soon okay, 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 